This episode of Seniors Today is brought to you in part by DuPage Medical Group. Welcome to Seniors Today, a talk show focused on what seniors and their families need to know to live their very best lives. I'm Denise Vaughn, the administrator at HomeWatch Caregivers Home Care, and with me is my co-host, Alan Hoffman, the co-owner of Oasis Senior Advisors. While it was really cool to turn up our music back in the day, now we're often turning the volume up on everything just so we can hear it. Our hearing health is so important. It's the third most prevalent health problem for older adults, and it affects more than 20% of Americans. In recent years, a considerable amount of scientific evidence has been published highlighting the connection between hearing loss and mental health. It's becoming clear that there is an association between unassisted hearing loss and cognitive decline and dementia. Today we have with us Dr. Jenny Wheeler, an audiologist from DuPage Medical Group. We also have with us Dr. Peter Pirro, a retired professor and our senior guest from Independence Village who has been managing mild hearing loss. Welcome Dr. Wheeler and Peter, we're so glad you could join us. Welcome. Thank you so much for having us. Good to be here. Great. Well, first I wanted to kick it off to you, Dr. Wheeler. We'd love to learn a little bit more about what an audiologist is and what you do. Can you give us a little bit of background? Absolutely. An audiologist is a hearing health care provider whose um, main goal is to be educated, to evaluate, to diagnose, and to treat hearing loss and other types of associated disorders, things like ringing in the ears, noises, um, fullness in the ears, hearing sensitivity, as well as hearing conservation and protection. And as of 2007, it is a required degree to get a doctorate in audiology. And you'll find audiologists in a wide range of different vocations. So different settings such as hospitals and ENT practice where I'm located, all the way to schools and private practices. And we do work with all ages, all types, and all degrees of hearing loss. Well, we're so glad that you're here and we can't wait to hear more about what we can all be doing to improve our health. I wanted to say thank you to Peter. And Peter, thank you for coming and sharing. I know you have um, shared that you have a mild hearing loss. Can you share a little bit about how you first realized that you had a hearing loss and what you did about it? Well, I, I was a, a teacher and a professor and uh, my classes went very well. But sometimes I did some consulting work and I would... Um, be speaking to larger groups, and I found that I was losing the groups, and I would be asking them to ask questions, and I didn't know where the question came from or who was talking, and I lost that person-to-person -person thing that really was very important to me. And, and I was very fortunate because my late wife was a very accomplished musician. She played French horn with a couple of symphony orchestras, and she said, uh, Peter, I think you better go have your ears checked. And I did. And so I immediately um, got a new a pair of uh, hearing aids. And they, they weren't very good. And, um, and it wasn't until really the fourth set I got that um, kind of helped because the technician who gave it uh, work with me was really good on that. And, and kind of individualized them for me. Well, I know you've had them for a while. I'm sure they've improved over the years for sure. I, I definitely wanted to hear from Dr. Wheeler too. How do people determine that they have a hearing loss? We do recommend that patients consider getting a hearing test right around age 50 sooner if they have any kind of difficulty hearing. So a lot of early warning signs such as asking people to repeat um, turning up that volume on the TV and on the radio, absolutely having difficulty in crowded or noisy areas, feeling like people are mumbling, and then as well um, as noise in the ears or any kind of fullness or pressure. Especially if you have a family history of hearing loss or any kind of exposure to noise. So maybe if you were in the military or you worked in an area around loud equipment or machinery, it's really good to have a test done sooner rather than later. Dr. Wheeler, I know there are different types of devices. Can you speak to those and, and how they're different? 
Yes, absolutely. So because technology is so wonderful nowadays, we really have been afforded so many different options of choosing how to explore hearing health care. And it's really important to understand what the differences between those options and those devices are. So a lot of times you'll see advertisements for personal amplifiers that will look like a traditional hearing aid, but they're not going to function the same way. And so both types of devices, amplifiers and hearing aids can improve hearing. However, only hearing aids are designed specifically to treat hearing loss. So that's what we really encourage patients to pursue is traditional hearing aids. Um, amplifiers are not a substitute for hearing aids. And oftentimes they can lead to a prolonged treatment or proper evaluation of hearing loss as well. Hearing aids are also going to be, as Peter even mentioned, with that fourth set, very individually programmed for each person's hearing loss specifically, whereas amplifiers tend to just make things louder and not clearer. Dr. Wheeler, one of the things that I just read was that one in five people with hearing aids actually wear them. And I know from my mother-in-law's situation that she's very compliant with them somewhere around 20 plus hours a day. Do you have any suggestions or techniques uh, that have been successful in helping people to be to wear them more often? Absolutely. We, we get very disheartened when we hear stories about um, patients that have invested their time and money in hearing aids and they're quote unquote sitting in the drawer. Um, drawer hearing aids are the worst because they're not helping anyone. So one of the things that really helps with use and compliance is regular follow-up and maintenance, especially in the beginning. It's important to understand that hearing aids do take time to adjust to, and sometimes they don't sound just right in the very beginning. Um, and a lot of times patients will become easily discouraged or give up or think, well, it's just not going to get any better. And that's not true. Um, I definitely encourage patients to go back in if they're experiencing any kind of difficulty with the sound quality or the fit, because it may just be that the audiologist needs to do some fine tuning for them to get things set just right. Every patient is going to have an individual experience, even if they have a similar hearing loss. So it's always important to follow up with that regular care and maintenance. And we do have patients come back at least every four to six months, kind of as a routine to have the hearing aids checked and cleaned because they do need a little bit of maintenance on our end as well to keep them working at 100%. Well, gosh, that's just so similar to what Peter was saying. Peter, tell us a little bit more about, you know, what you said in the beginning, it was really difficult with your new hearing aids and you said that they weren't that great and now they're really helping. Maybe you can talk to us a little bit more about what you think helped them work better and how compliant you are in actually wearing your hearing aids because it seems to me like you use them all the time and they've really helped your life. Well, I was working uh, with a fellow by the name of Eric in um, Oklahoma City, and I've had my last two sets with him, and he uh, was had a computerized program so that he could um, raise the volume or lower the volume or intensify things. We couldn't quite deal with, uh, I couldn't quite deal with what I call articulation, but I, my, I'm getting a sound very well. And in fact, I now have the hearing aid that I have on now. I've lowered the volume considerably. So I have plenty of volume, but I can't understand the words sometimes. And I, he did tell me I'm a pretty good lip reader, too, and that, that enters into it. So if you're looking at me and I'm talking to you and, and I'm reading your lips to some extent, uh, I can understand what's happening. But sometimes people actually mumble. Like they can't believe it. But uh, it wasn't my hearing going, it was their mumbling that was bothering me. <laughs> no, <laughs> you're right, though. You're, but, you're so right. Yeah, but, you know, I, uh, you have to be patient. You have to be committed to what you're doing. And my hearing aids are part of my, um, you know, brushing my teeth, taking my medicine, putting my hearing aids in, and, um, and just staying with them. And when I get on the phone, for example... I, I have to do some educating. I'm still a teacher, and I'm trying to educate the people around me to speak a little more loudly and give me some eye contact and, and so that I can deal with them. 
So if you called me on the phone, I would say, will you speak a little more slowly and a little louder? And, you know, the especially the people trying to sell me something, they do very well on that. They make sure I do very well. <laughs> and and it, that improves a lot. And it, even my people I'm meeting with. But the problems I run into very much are hearing two or three sounds at the same time from different directions. And that becomes very difficult. And the, the other thing is that... Um, you're really not very good on directionality because I, I I can't always determine where the sound is coming from so that I can face it. And so those are little things that you kind of live with and and just do the best you can. Well, I love that you talked about people being committed. I think that that really hits what Alan was saying. Well, I want to thank you both for sharing your stories. We'll be right back with more seniors today. Spa celebrations, driveway defense, screened in salons. You found so many ways to improve your family's well being while at home, but some care is better left to the experts. That's why DuPage Medical Group offers safe, convenient access for everything from routine checkups to visits with specialty physicians. Because staying healthy keeps you ready for all the good things to come. DuPage Medical Group, we care for you. Martin Avenue Apartments offers affordable homes and an active community for lower income people aged 62 and older and, and persons with disabilities. Naperville Elderly Homes, a little history here, uh, was founded 40 years ago by a group of citizens that were concerned about the future uh, and the city being affordable for seniors and it's the nonprofit owner of Martin Avenue Apartments. We just completed construction of a brand new five-story building and we renovated all of the other existing apartments. But what's really amazing, I think, is the amenities and the community space we were able to create during this transformation. It really has provided us with spaces like a computer lab, kitchen with bistro and we also went outside and created a huge courtyard with grills and a terrace and a seating area and it's truly an enriching environment for our residents. We do transform lives and give our seniors a sense of security but it really does take a village and community engagement is critical to our success when my parents uh, came here first, the very first day they walked into their apartment, the, the apartment they have actually occupied for about 20 some years, they fell in love. The location, the people, the activities, everything has just been a wonderful experience for them. Our mission is to transform lives and we do it by empowering the elderly with a, a sense of security and community and enrichment. And there's nothing like this in DuPage County. And I think that makes us special. Welcome back to Seniors Today. I'm Denise Vaughn, the Administrator at HomeWatch Caregivers Home Care, and back with us is our co-host Alan Hoffman from Oasis Senior Advisors, Dr. Jenny Wheeler, our audiologist from DMG, and our senior guest, Dr. Peter Pirro. One thing we were talking about at our last session was just how important it is to be able to read lips. And so one of the things I was thinking about, you know, I'm in my 50s and I know I'm struggling now sometimes hearing people when they're wearing masks. Can you talk a little bit about that, Dr. Wheeler? What are you seeing? Are people now noticing that they may have a hearing loss because they can't read lips? We are seeing more patients come in with concerns about their hearing loss that they didn't really realize until about the last year or so. 
So I think the masks are causing that added challenge that are helping people to realize my hearing is not as good as I thought it was because we do get a lot of visual information, a lot of cues from facial expression and especially reading lips. And we do it a lot of times unconsciously without even noticing. So all of a sudden that added information that was helping someone get the clear message is just gone. And of course, um, masks do tend to muffle and tend to change the sound a little bit as well. So it can become a pretty big hindrance. And I think patients are becoming more aware of some of those acute hearing problems because they don't have that added benefit of facial expression and reading lips. Peter, have you found uh, difficulty with people wearing masks and you understanding and hearing them? I really miss the um, lip reading. I really miss that because uh, when I'm out talking to people, because I'm a very visual learner and I learn almost everything through my eyes. I, auditory learning has never been good for me. When I was in college, I learned that taking notes was important because I was learning from the notes I was taking rather than the, the what people were saying to me. So auditory is extremely um, second, second rate to visual. Well, I, I really miss lip reading. I guess that's it. No, you know what? I think it's really important what we've talked about, too, is right now seniors are sometimes so isolated because they're not able to, they're not talking to many people. They're not having visitors. When they are visiting folks, they're, you know, wearing masks, and it's a little bit harder to hear. I did want to address the point we talked about when we kicked off the show about how important hearing is to mental health and um, into cognitive you know, learning. So I thought maybe Dr. Wheeler, you could talk to us a little bit about what research has been done about people being able to hear and, and possibly if they can't hear, if that has any sort of effect on, on early dementia or memory loss. Correct evaluation is really important because hearing loss and cognitive issues like dementia can prevent very similarly. And I've had experiences with patients come in that seem unalert, confused, unaware, withdrawn, um, or even seem to not understand the language that's being spoken. And I put them in the test booth and turn the volume up through the headphones and they come to life because it really wasn't a language barrier. It wasn't a cognitive issue. It was just a hearing loss. So it is really important to have both of those things properly evaluated whenever there's concerns. The studies that are out there are really looking at patients with dementia and hearing loss. And when that hearing loss goes untreated, and that's typically treatment with hearing aids, when it goes untreated, that cognitive ability can decline more rapidly than when the patient does wear hearing aids. It's really important to continue to give the brain as much information, just as, as Peter was saying, visually, auditorily, you help, you know, by writing it down to remember. All of that information really helps the brain to get a clear message. So anytime there's memory issues, I always recommend a hearing check and treating with hearing aids when, when necessary. Really good to know because I know sometimes, I think vanity gets in the way of people having hearing aids. You know, do you find that that's the case or, you know, people are saying, oh my gosh, you know, people will think I'm older or, you know, it, it just, I can't wear them for that reason. And when you know it can affect your brain health so much, I think we might be all willing to wear them a little bit more. Yes, there's definitely still a stigma um, of quote unquote, my grandfather's hearing aids. Um, thankfully though, technology has afforded us much uh, prettier, so to speak, more cosmetically appealing hearing devices. And so there are a lot more options that are far more discreet. And it really tends to be more noticeable when you're constantly asking people to repeat than when you're actually wearing a hearing aid. So it really is uh, beneficial to do something sooner rather than later. You do tend to feel a little bit of, of that younger rejuvenation because you're able to participate in a lot more activities, group activities and access that hearing better. And thankfully they do look a lot more appealing as well. Dr. Wheeler, uh, before we got on here, I checked just to see if Medicare was yet paying for hearing aids, because I think within the last five to 10 years, I thought there was some legislation that was pending that might provide coverage, but it doesn't sound like that's happened. 
Uh, I know hearing aids are expensive. Can you speak to the cost? And then what does the future look like for maybe some assistance uh, to pay down the cost? Absolutely. So there was some legislation passed in 2020 um, for 2021 plans. It's certain Medicare Advantage plans that you can sign up for that do have benefits for hearing aids. So it's not a traditional Medicare plan, but there are some Medicare Advantage plans. And I have actually seen a trend. I've been in the field itself for about 13 years, and I have seen a trend where insurance companies are doing a better job Supplements are providing a lot more benefits or discount programs. So I am seeing a lot more help from insurances. The good thing too is there is a wide range of technology and a wide range for different budgets. Hearing aids are definitely an investment, but they're a really important investment in our hearing health. But there's a nice range of products. So whether a patient is needing a simpler lifestyle, maybe not all the bells and whistles of the highest end technology, or if someone has a really demanding high fat, you know, high life, um, very dynamic types of environments, then that higher level of technology is going to be appropriate. So thankfully, there are a lot of different levels to um, to look into as well. I don't know how much of that might change in the future. We are always pushing as a audiology group to try to get better coverage from insurance mm -hmm. companies, especially Medicare. Um, so we're always hopeful as we've seen some improvement already. Um, but the technology tends to get better and better, so the cost of that technology doesn't tend to come down too much. That is so good to know, because I know sometimes cost is a barrier for people getting what they need. And even though we've been talking about how important it is for our brains to be able to hear and our quality of life, sometimes if people don't have the budget, they may not be able to get what they need. So that's really, really encouraging. I did want to ask Peter, is there any advice you would have to other people who may think they need a hearing aid? Well, <clears throat> Let me let me just uh, digress a little bit. We have a lot of activities here where people have to talk to each other, bingo and so forth, and uh, other games, and poker, which I like very much <laughs> twice a week. And so our uh, people here keep us busy talking to each other, and uh, so we're using our our sight and hearing. Uh, I think there's a little problem that. Um, People are more apt to think you're getting old if you're wearing uh, hearing aids rather than just glasses. I mean, that's and uh, there's a little ego involvement there, but um, we get past that. But we have a social situation here where we're talking to a lot of people, which a lot of you can't do. And it's in some way, it's an advantage because I, I, we're always talking to people here and without masks, and it's wonderful. But, uh, and one more quick aside, I am I do a lot of reading, and we have a great library here, and, uh, and we can hook up with a, the public library, but we have a library right here in the facility. And the other thing, I'm writing a book now with a friend in Florida mm -hmm. on um, beginning coaching. So he's doing the coaching kind of thing, and I'm doing the psychology, and just marvelous. And I'm keeping ourselves busy is really important. But I think you're such a great example. I, I I hate to put you on the spot and you don't even have to answer, but do you want to let us know how old you are, Peter? 94. I just love that. I love that. And you're active and you're enjoying your life. And I mean, can you imagine? I'll be 95 in May. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Almost 95. Can you imagine it's living? Only it's only number, but it's a big number. It is. Congratulations <laughs> on that. Can you even imagine what your life would be like if you couldn't hear clearly? Oh, yeah. I mean, um, my hearing isn't the great, but it's it's um, I'm I'm able to do things. So you know, and uh, whatever I have, I I can use, and and hearing is uh, sufficient. Thank you so much, Dr. Wheeler and Peter, for being with us. And thank you to all of you for joining us on Seniors Today. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much. It's been a joy. This episode of Seniors Today is brought to you in part by DuPage Medical Group.